Let's talk about a new type that has been introduced in Skate of One, the variant type, also named Tagged Union. Let's work in, let's create a new module that I'm going to call Geom for geometry. So in Skate, it has always been possible to aggregate values of various types to build a bigger type named structure. For example, a Cartesian point is an X and a Y. Each one defines a dimension, each field defined a dim defines a dimension, which is kind of convenient for a 2D point. So let's create a type point, which is a structure with an X axis of type float 32 and a Y axis also of type float 32. The point is at the same time, or has at the same time, both an X and a Y coordinate. But what if you want to be able to say that something is this or that instead of this and that? Let's take an example. To stay in the 2D geometry world, let's say we want to speak about the shape. I'm going to create a type shape. And I would like this shape to be either a rectangle Is there a circle? So what I've written here is that the shape can be either a rectangle or a circle. We'll be able to use this type anywhere as any skate type. So let's create a new operator. And let's give it an input S. So here I'm asked for a type, so I can use this newly created type here for its input. Okay, I can use it as well for local variables, outputs, whatever. So now within this operator, I can match this input S, and I can have something specific executed when S is a rectangle and something else executed when S is a circle. Of course, it's not limited to two variants. I can add a new variant here. So let's say I want to be able to represent a polygon with a regular polygon with any number of sides. Let's call it n gone. Okay, so you see this is an error here because I'm not covering all the cases. Well, I will have to add a new case below and ensure it is covered as well. What we have now permits to differentiate shapes just as a regular enum would do. However, a rectangle, a circle, and an n-gon have different characteristics. Well, we want to be able to put this information into the type itself. Let's create a new type, rect, to represent rectangles. And I can give it a height of type float 32 and a width, same thing. I'm also going to create another type for the circles. Has a center of type point and it has a radius of type flow 32. Yeah, let's rename that. Okay. <clears throat> and Yet another type for my end gone. Which is which has a number of sides. Let's limit that to 255, a center, and a radius as well.
I can then use these structures as a load in my shape. Okay, my rectangle rect, my sickle sickle, and my end gone and gone. Okay, so let's progress a little bit on our operator here. We'll say that this operator will compute the perimeter of these shapes. Okay, so its output will be a perimeter P type of 32. Okay. I'm going to need simple trigonometric tools to do that. I have already loaded here a math library, which contains a constant P with a very well-known value and uh, an implementation of uh, the sine function, which here in that case relies on the standard CD math. So now let's define P for rectangles. So I can write that the perimeter P is 2 multiplied by so here I will need something to be able to refer to the rectangle. I will call it R. Okay, so I'm, I'm adding the width and the height and multiplying that by 2. Okay, so this should be R. I created definition instead of an expression. And here we are. Now, if I want uh, uh, to do the circle, I'm going to use a textual equation to say that the perimeter P is 2 multiplied by by my circle radius. Of course, I need two things. Here I need to say that the circle, this is C, and here I need to say that I'm using this math library. Okay, so if I'm adding here a use directive, and I still miss something here, which is that this is in a different project, and this project is not visible from that one. I'm just going the workspace here. So I'm seeing my two projects. I'm just going to say that this two project depends on this math project. And if I come back on my perimeter here, we see that the errors have disappeared. Okay. Finally, the end goal. So my parameter, it's twice the radius multiplied by the sine of P divided by the number of slides. Uh, uh, n is an integer, uh, I will have to cast it to flow 32. So let's implement that. I'm going to use the sin function here because now it's visible and available. And I'm just going to add here, for example, textual input for the x value. I'm going to say that this is math p divided by, we said it's n. So my n gone dot n and I need to cast that to a float 32. Okay, it doesn't know ng because I didn't say what ng is. It's here. And then I'm just going to multiply this. By twice the and gone radius. And this is our perimeter. A little bit of photo layout, and we are good. So if we look at it, okay, there's no error left here in our implementation, nor in our module. So that means that the module is correct and we can exercise it.
Okay, so I'm just going here to create a test harness for it. I'm going to create a new test module named test and an harness into it named harness perimeter. Okay, so this automatically created this new test module and this new test harness with the right use directive and an initial uh, design uh, uh, operator on the test. So what I want to do now is to build an object variable of type rectangle, for example, connect it here, it's my shape S, and I'm, I have to, to give it height and width. And connect them here. Okay, we are good. Okay, so we have a very simple way to exercise this, which is just to input a rectangle of 8 15 with 35 and ask to compute the perimeter. So I'm running that. So this is generating the code, compiling it, linking with it. So the result here that you're going to see is exactly what is done by the code generator. So we see here that we're building this rectangle here. We can look into it. Okay, we see that it could be a rectangle, a circle, or an engong, but it's a rectangle with this value of 8 in width. And I can get into my perimeter function and see that indeed S is a rectangle and the computed parameter is 100, okay, which is twice the width plus the height. We have seen in this episode how to define a variant type, how to decompose it to access its content, and as well as how to build it. This addition to the language might seem quite innocent, but it's an important extension to the power of expression of the type system, opening the door to new applications for scale. Thanks for watching.